Hello, my loyal subjects, and welcome! Today, we're going to be talking about how to make a physically-based metallic shader in Blender. And there are some weird mechanics that govern metallic shaders, but first of all, let's dive in and let's talk about metals. Metals, or metallics, are any material that's conductive. Um, you know, the reason why metals are metals, the reason why they look the way they are, is because they are conductive. They're conductive to electricity, and as a result, they interact with light weirdly. Um, well, they're conductive in general, I guess would be the way to put it. I'm not, uh, I'm not a scientist. I don't actually know why they're called conductive. Huh, I should probably look that up at some point. Anyway, they're conductive. That is why. Um, I assume it's because they conduct electricity, but I know it's because they interact with light in a weird way. So... What makes a metallic? What behaviors are we going to need in order to model how they look? Well, first of all, metallics are mostly reflection with very, very little diffuse. They have virtually no diffuse, to the point where most CG programs on a metallic material will literally just not include a diffuse component because it's so tiny and subtle that most of the time your eye will clamp out the amount of color left over from it um, you know, it'll just remove it, because your eye doesn't pick up really, really dark colors. They can also tint their reflections. Um, that is to say that they can have a color to them. Uh, they can reflect different amounts of light. They still have to uh, respect the rule of Fresnel, which is that objects become more and more reflective um, at grazing angles and eventually completely reflective. Um, however, they also can have an edge tint, and this is one of those things that is often overlooked, is that they can have an edge tint. Now obviously I've exaggerated this for demonstration purposes. This is one of those things that's physically there, but is very rare. It's rarely visible in materials unless you're dealing with a material that's very specifically engineered to look a specific way. Now the reason why they can have an edge tint is because the way metallics tint their reflections is basically by having a different Fresnel curve depending on what frequency of light they're hit with. Um, that is to say, they can have different Fresnel curves for red, green, and blue, and different colors of the spectrum. So red light might not have the same Fresnel values as blue light or anything of that regard. Now we're going to be doing a very simplified version of it, because the math behind metallics and Fresnel is ridiculously complicated, and um, frankly I don't understand it completely, but this is essentially what it comes down to. We're going to be approximating it using a light approximation that's good for artists and is enough to give you PBR consistency, but don't expect to be plugging physical values into the shader or matching the stuff from something like Maxwell. You can match it quality-wise as far as render quality, but your colors aren't going to be exactly interpreted the same way. Uh, that's, for, that's true of a lot of different shading equations, but anyway, just a little uh, heads up and a warning here. So anyway, um, as a result, the grazing reflections can basically fall off at different angles. You know, you can have these different curves. This is obviously a curve where it goes from a relatively gray color down here and sort of splits apart into a color over here that is not that. It's kind of an orangey looking color. So, let's dive into the implementation. So, one of the first things we're going to need to start off with is a glossy shader, because I mentioned that it was mostly reflections. We're just going to take it as, this is completely reflective, because honestly it's not even worth modeling the diffuse component, it would probably cause more problems than it would actually fix. So, we're just going to start with a glossy shader just to work with our reflections. Um, so yeah, next let's hit Control g to throw it into a node group. And it'll automatically, uh, automatically add the inputs and outputs, because we're only selecting one, which is lovely. Um, next, let's add a color mix, because we want to mix it with white. Um, and we want to mix it with white based on the Fresnel effect. Um, I'm using the custom Fresnel node we made earlier that takes into account roughness. Um, this is important, because when we add the edge tint, we're going to also need that. Um, plus, also, metal roughness still respects the idea that rough surfaces don't interact with light at a grazing angle as much. So anyway, uh, make sure you expose all your values. Roughness needs to be connected up and index of refraction needs to be exposed and all that. 
And yeah, this is about a basic um, metallic shader. Um, set up the defaults as you like, and boom, you've got a metallic shader. This will handle, uh, again, it's not that different from a glossy shader. It's basically just a glossy shader with Fresnel, but it is a... Uh, it's slightly more flexible. It'll handle darker metals really well. It'll handle roughness a little bit better, and it'll also ground in your environment. It'll give you things like rim lighting on the actual metals a lot easier. So that's uh, significantly... Um, it's a significant improvement over just using a glossy shader, even if it isn't like super visible in your actual scene, it makes a much larger difference because it'll actually play with the light in the scene a lot more. Um, you won't have to do as much tweaking to your materials. It's just going to give you more correct results without you having to do a bunch of random shuffling and tweaking of values. So again, uh, metallics have some weirdness in the way they handle Fresnel including the ability to get an edge tint. So, in order to start implementing this, and in order to start working on it, we're gonna need to improve our Fresnel nodes slightly. And in the process of that, let's crack it open. And I've minimized everything there on the left side. Control H, by the way, will hide any inputs that are not connected, which is what I did to the geometry node, since there's no point having this huge, huge node when I'm only using one output of it. Um, so anyway, we've got our little custom rough normal there to um, make Fresnel act like it's hitting dead on and all that, you know, all the stuff we made in the Fresnel video. So we're going to need to drop down a layer weight because we're going to need a facing ratio. Now, uh, I had some questions in the previous video about why not use, uh, why use a layer weight and why not use a layer weight. Um, one of the things about layer weight that's actually really good about the layer weight Fresnel effect versus the built-in Fresnel node is that... The layer weight Fresnel effect does not have problems with surfaces with the wrong normals. Um, layer weight will interact correctly with the backs of surfaces as well, or backs of polygons as well as the front. Uh, the normal Fresnel node has some glitches on the back sides of surfaces. Um, the downside to it is that it doesn't work for things like glass, which is a problem. So again, that's sort of that's the trade-off we play. But because metallics can only ever be opaque. Uh, we can use it, and specifically what we're going to be using is facing, because we want to do this for edge tint. We want to do this for edge tint, so... Um, yeah, we're going to need the normal from that, because, again, we want it to be... Uh, to act like it's hitting dead-on more... Like, light is hitting dead-on more and more and more as we increase roughness. We want it to take into account roughness. So, uh, again, just connect up the fancy little color mix we added, and... Uh, yeah, we'll expose the facing value. Now, we're not quite done yet, because we need to modify that facing value. For those who aren't aware what facing is, it's um, it's zero if it's directly facing you, and one if it's perpendicular to your camera, if it's at a complete grazing angle. But unlike Fresnel, it doesn't have a fancy curve to it. It just goes between zero and one, and it goes through in a straight line. This is really useful if you want to make your own shading. Um, and in our case, we need to a uh, simple little approximation. This is just a visual approximation that I figured out. Uh, putting it to the power of about point, uh, 2.5 works really, really well to give us the value we're going to need to tint the edges of our reflections. So minimize it up. Make sure your graphs are clean. You know, it's just a general good tip. Just minimize stuff. You can hit the H key, by the way, to minimize a node that you have selected. And you can do scales and rotations and all your traditional uh, things you would do in object mode, you can do those in the node editor as well. And uh, yeah, so compact everything down so it's easy to read, and boom, we've got our fancy Fresnel node. Next thing we're going to need to do is incorporate it into our metallic shader. So let's crack that open. Let's give ourselves a little bit of room to work, because we're going to need it. And let's drop down a color mix. We're going to mix between the original color we choose and a rim value, uh, based on how our little metallic facing, which you might want to name something a little bit more articulate than just facing, but in my case, I just left it as that. Um, so now you've got a rim color and an original color. This is useful for some kinds of car paint, for example. Honestly, not that many materials have it. Um, luckily, it's not a super huge deal to actually copy the colors over. You can literally just click and drag on color and drag it onto rim, so just drag it slightly down and uh, you'll be able to make it the same color. 
Um, or you can just make it black, in which case you get kind of a cool dip in your Fresnel curve that looks quite nice. Um, it's not super obvious. The rim color is not super obvious unless you've got some very specific color differences. But uh, yeah, it's pretty subtle, but it's a nice one if you're really going for uh, a full color, you know, a full metallic uh, PBR shader. So anyway, but yeah, that's it. Um, enjoy, have fun. This is a really, this is some quick stuff that I threw together with some sculpts and some modeling that I did. But uh, yeah, you can see just some basic normal maps and roughness maps and stuff. And uh, in the case of the dagger on the left, or the knife on the left, uh, some basic clear coating. Which is literally just a metallic shader with the uh, being thrown through the reflection node we made last time. Um, which will add a clear coat to it, which is super nice. Um, that's how you make clear coat car paint and everything. Which I'll do probably a more in-depth video on at some point. Um, not necessarily in the near future, I have some other stuff I want to cover first. But yeah, hopefully this has been informative to you. And uh, yeah, hopefully you make some cool stuff. Um, yeah. Hopefully uh, this w has enlightened you at the very least and has taught you how metallics work. And uh, hopefully this will let you create some pretty cool visuals. And uh, yeah, make wolf heads apparently. So yeah, peace out. Thuluf Taken. Sorry for the delay on this video, guys. These slides take a certain amount of time to make. So anyway, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of something meaningful to say at the end of these videos because I should probably be like nudging go watch go watch 3d bandit 3d bandit makes awesome procedural texturing stuff and you should probably watch his stuff because he makes amazing stuff um yeah and especially with metals like procedural texturing is really versed for metals like on the knife on the left has no um it's all procedural stuff and I pretty much used some of his techniques to do it um or stuff inspired by his techniques his style of going about, how he approaches procedural textures. He's really good at that stuff. Um, the wolf on the right, if you're going to do something a little more organic and rough, I'd recommend using images for a lot of it, because images are super random and super disorganized and organic. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there are a lot of really cool things. Um, also, HDR reflections are super important. Um, in this case, I'm using the old industrial hall from the Civil Library, um, S-I-V-L, really good little library, um, pretty much I'm pretty sure if you look up just HDRI library you'll find them, but uh, yeah, those are my tips for making metallic materials. Sorry the ending's so rambly on this. Peace out, Kluf Taken. Oh, I need to go sleep. Goodbye.